this is Occupational Therapy with Kim and Jen, and I am Kim. And I am still Jen. We're still Jen. Forever. Today, we're going to talk to you about transitions. Transitions are moving from one activity to another, one thing to another. That's very hard for adults sometimes. That's very hard for kids. Uh, what? I'm going to give you an example of that. I wake up in the morning, I want to have my coffee because I'm grumpy, and then the phone rings and I have to start work right away. I have a hard time making that transition. I need that coffee time. Or I'm watching a great program and the phone rings, somebody wants to talk to me about work, and I love Yellowstone, for example. I don't want to talk on the phone, but I have to make that transition. So transitions are difficult for adults or difficult for kids. The kids are watching their favorite TV show and then we have to take them to go grocery shopping. And sometimes we're not sensitive to the fact that it's hard for them. And we turn off that TV right away and they start crying and they have a temp temper tantrum. Jen, you have some examples for transitions for kids? Well, I have many of the same examples. So one of my pet peeves is when I literally have just sat down on the couch and my significant other wants me to do something right then and there. And nope, I literally just sat down. I don't want to transition again. There's maybe not a consideration of what I'm doing or what I had been doing. Um, so that is not my shining star moment. Exactly. So what we're trying to tell you is transitions are difficult for everybody. And they're really difficult for little kids who don't have coping strategies or they don't understand why they have to put the toy down and go somewhere else. So please understand that it's difficult and please give them a little bit of time to make that adjustment just like we want time to make that adjustment. So that's the first thing that we want to know. So the next thing that we want to know is before you want them to make a transition, make sure you get their attention. You just don't go up to the television and turn it off or take the toy and put it away. You get their attention and then you tell them what you want them to do. But let's give them a warning for that. First, Jen, let's talk about warning because that's so important. So important. So we have um, kids that may or may not understand language, may or may not understand pictures. Um, if, if your child is younger and you just want to give them a hand signal like five more minutes, they don't understand the time concept. That's okay. But if we're consistent and we show them the hand signal and then in a couple of, you know, in a space of time, something happens or they transition, it will become predictable and they will understand that that would that's what they mean. Sometimes I have used songs with kids. We're going to clean up and this, when the song is over, we'll be all done. Or um, with my older kids, I have used the now and then cards. First you can watch TV and then we're going to eat dinner or whatever the now and then or first and next or whatever words you wanna use. Um, so sometimes even flashing lights. I have um, some kids who literally are so zoned into what they're doing, they have no concept of anything else going around them. So I have to like turn the lights on and off to get their attention. So make sure that you give them time to adjust for all of that. Some kids you can just say, hey, in one minute, we're going to put that toy down and it's time for lunch. Some kids, that's all you need to do. You might have to repeat that phrase three times. This is a, a free app on my iPhone. I have it for 10 seconds and you might say, okay, when you hear this button, we're gonna put that toy down and come for breakfast. And you just push the little button there. And it has all kinds of pictures that you can choose from. And when that time is up, and they know it's time to move on to the next activity. Now these things may not work all the time on the first time that you introduce them, but if you're consistent and you give these little warnings time again and again, they will start to be effective for your children. Yeah. Jenna, so a, a couple of other tricks to help you along the way with that is to leave plenty of time. So a lot of it, unfortunately, I know that you have a lot on your plate already. Um, a, you're a parent, period. Um, but if you have literally any other responsibility, cleaning, cooking, laundry, other kids, job, the list is endless. But it takes a lot of, um, planning on your part so that you can be organized and leave them plenty of time. So it's not the, okay, let's go get your shoes on and we're ready to go. And then you realize that you forgot to do five things. So then they're just hanging out and not understanding that concept. So it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of organization on the adult's part. Yeah. Especially if you're leaving the house. And I know I had three kids. So 
you're leaving the house and then all of a sudden it's 11 o'clock and you've got the pediatrician appointment in 15 minutes and you've got to get out the door. Then that stress happens. You're feeling the stress. The child's feeling the stress. That makes the transition more difficult. So if you know that you're going to have to make that transition, if you can give yourself even 10 extra minutes to allow that transition to happen, then everybody's calmer. Uh, another thing we want you to know is try and keep the, the schedule predictable. Um, particularly if you're home at COVID and you, your kids are having to do the, the um, education from their internet, um, you're going to want to have a very predictable schedule. They know what time they're eating, they know what time they have to get dressed, they know what time class is, they know what time dinner is. If it's predictable every day, those transitions are a little bit easier. For the younger kids, you can use a picture schedule, you know, so they you can bring it out and say, okay, it's time for breakfast. There's a picture of them eating breakfast. And then if it's internet time because it's school time, then you can have a picture of that. So picture schedules are very helpful too. Absolutely. What else you have, Jen? I think I jumped out of sequence a little bit. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna jump to the next one if you're good with that. And that was keeping the um, directions simple. So being very specific, if, if you know that you have a string of things you want them to do, they need to um, go to the bathroom, back, pack their backpack, get their shoes on, get their coat on, and head out the door. Give one direction at a time. It's time to go to the bathroom so that um, it's not overwhelming. Limit your language. If you have a child that can go with choices, if they have the language for that, go for it. Do you want to wear your pink shoes or your red shoes so they feel like they have some control to help them? But if not, it is not really a question. It's a statement. Yep, we are going to the bathroom and we walk to the bathroom. It's kind of like a statement and a walk all at the same time so that we can constantly keep them moving and keep them doing what we're asking them to do by following those directions. We say this in a lot of our videos that as parents, and we're guilty of that because we have a lot of kids between the two of us, less communication is better. Transitions are stressful. And so if we add a lot of words onto it as a parent, they're already stressed about making a transition. We make it more stressful by talking. As Jen said, Make the expectation known. Don't say much else. So. The next one I had was be consistent and be present and prepared for the follow through. So this goes back to that whole organization piece that um, if you say that it's time to go, don't take that phone call that just pops up because it, your child will not understand that you told them to go, but it's not time to go. And am I going? Are we on the phone? Um, and trying to keep those distractions to a minimum when you are walking them through this phase of transition. Yeah, that's, that's very important. And um, I wanna discuss that just a little bit more because if you make that expectation to your child, then your job now is, and your only job is to make sure that they follow through. So you may have another child calling for you. You may have the phone ringing. You may have something else going on. Do your best just to maintain focus on that one activity as best that you can so they don't get confused that you walk away and then they're like oh i guess she didn't really mean that i can stay on this activity for another minute right and another piece of that is that enabling piece where i get that it is way easier just to go do the job yourself but in doing all of this the transitions the walking them through the task helping helping them understand language we are trying to um, teach them a skill as opposed to enabling them um, so sometimes natural consequences come into play where they didn't do what they, you know, were asked to do. So now we ran out of time to do maybe something that they wanted to do. So don't, don't, don't get that mommy guilt in terms of trying to enable, enable them because we're really trying to teach them a skill, a life skill. Right. And then on that note, um, there's natural consequences for not falling through, but there's also praise when they've done it. You did a really good job listening to me today. I really like the way that you put that toy away when I asked you to come over to lunch. So praise is more powerful than, than consequences. So you want to give lots of praise throughout the day when they're following just little steps of what you've asked them to do. Yep. Another tip is being organized. So if you say, um, can you go get your shoes or go get your diaper or put the blocks away, if the blocks and the shoes are in a consistent spot every single solitary day, they won't spend a lot of time looking, that they've done this routine over and over and over so they know exactly where things are, which is very difficult for especially single moms, single working moms, or dads, sorry. Um, but it is very difficult to be on top and and, it's hard. So I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm just saying it'll make your life easier if you can be organized. 
And if you have older kids, another tip is use them as role models. So if your younger child is having trouble following through with transitions, call the older child out. Hey, it's time to put your toy away. They can put the toy away. Or if you're wanting that younger child to put their blocks away and they're not doing it, the older child can take a couple of them, not all of them, but a couple of them and be a role model for that younger child. It's very powerful. It makes that role, the older child feel important and helpful. And uh, a lot of times that younger child will watch that older child and do what they're doing. So the last one that I have on my list and hopefully it's the same for you, Kim, <laughs> is that you, sometimes these transitions are difficult because we're transitioning from a desirable activity to a less desirable activity. So maybe we have to leave the TV show to go get in the bath or eat dinner or whatever it is go to the store, doesn't matter. Um, so we want you to try and make the transitions a little bit fun. So maybe we can hop to um, the store. Or I had a little girl actually last week on a um, Zoom where she was starved. And part of it is that interception piece where they don't understand that they're hungry until they are so hungry. And then they just can't wait. And the microwave, the food was in the microwave and she could not wait. So we, we were just singing and doing bounces and jumping around so that she got her mind off of it and that transition was not so difficult. So be playful, have fun, um, find out what their sensory needs are. Do they like to jump? Do they like to dance? You know, put a song on, they might forget how long it takes. So that's another strategy. Mm -hmm. And you can incorporate that older child in, you know, if it's time to leave, because leaving the house is sometimes very hard. Let's see who can hop to the door the fastest. So um, you can kind of combine several of the strategies. We hope this was a helpful information. We'd love to hear your comments below and please like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.